Does the RTX 5070 really offer 4090 levels of performance? The CEO of Nvidia claims that it does, but is he right? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the True or False series, I help you avoid the hype and misinformation by showing you the truth from a source you can trust. It's not rocket science, and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. During the launch event for the Nvidia 50 series cards at CES 2025, the CEO of Nvidia Video, Jensen Wang made the now infamous statement that the RTX 5070 offers 4090 levels of performance. RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. This generated a lot of hype and set expectations high for the new 50 series cards. In fact, after the event, many RTX 4090 owners decided to sell their cards, anticipating that the new RTX 5080 would offer a significant performance upgrade. The problem with a claim like this is that there was no data to back it up. It was marketing hype. But is it true? Let's find out. But first, it's important to understand some of the relevant technologies that Nvidia offers. Nvidia introduced AI-driven upscaling technology, which they call Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, as a key feature of the GeForce 20 series cards in September of 2018. DLSS is a suite of AI-driven image enhancement and upscaling technologies, or algorithms, that allow higher resolution graphics to be generated from lower resolution images. It is a type of video rendering technique that boosts frame rate by rendering frames at a lower resolution than displayed and using deep learning or AI to upscale the frame so that they look like they should at the native resolution. It relies on dedicated hardware together with AI to do this in real time. For example, with DLSS on, a game's frames could be rendered at 1080p resolution and then upscaled and output at 4K resolution, allowing frame rates consistent with 1080p but delivering sharper images that look similar to 4K. You can see the performance impact of doing this in Cyberpunk 2077, where switching to performance mode had a significant impact on the frame rates, especially at lower resolutions, where the GPU itself is computationally powerful enough to push additional frames. Frame generation is a feature within the DLSS suite that creates new frames based on existing frames generated by the game engine. It was first introduced by Nvidia in 2022 with the launch of their RTX 40 series GPUs. The simplest way to explain frame generation is that it's an AI driven form of interpolation. So put simply, it will create an entirely new frame between two game engine rendered frames, which means that it will be the average of those two frames. You might hear people call these new frames fake, but that's not accurate since the technology relies on the frames rendered from the game engine. It can't create or remove objects. Given that you can only use this technology with upscaling or DLSS turned on, if the frames rendered with DLSS look bad, so will the AI generated frame. The advantage of using frame generation is that your game will appear smoother, your frame rates will increase, and the new frame is inherently accurate. The disadvantage is that you need to wait for a future frame to be generated before displaying the new frame, which creates a lag and increases latency. To solve this, Nvidia introduced multi-frame generation with the RTX 50 series GPUs. DLSS multi-frame generation generates up to three additional frames per traditionally rendered frame. The simplest way to explain the new multi-frame generation is that it's an AI-driven form of extrapolation. So this means that the algorithm will create entirely new frames from one game engine rendered frame, essentially predicting the future. I think it's more accurate to call these new frames fake, given that they are predictions. However, they are based on real rendered frames from the game engine. So as long as the time increment is small enough, then it's extremely unlikely that something fake will appear on screen. The advantage of this approach is that you don't have to wait for a future frame to be rendered to generate the new frame, so the impact on latency is minimal. The downside is that you're predicting a future frame, so for a dynamic environment where a lot of objects are moving and changing direction rapidly, there is a greater possibility of visual glitches appearing on screen. According to Nvidia, this new frame generation AI model is 40% faster and uses 30% less VRAM, which is impressive. To understand how these AI-based technologies impact performance, I decided to test two games that support these features, Black Myth Wukong and Cyberpunk 2077. I used my Ryzen 7 9800X3D based test bench that includes an ROG Crosshair X870E Apex motherboard, combined with G-Skill Trident Z5 Royal Neo DDR5 8000 RAM. For the GPUs, I used Nvidia's Founders Edition cards for both the RTX 5070 and 4090 to avoid any performance biasing from factory overclocks. Starting with Black Myth Wukong, comparing stock performance at 4K with cinematic graphics settings, you can see that it's not even close, with the RTX 4090 offering around 72% better average gaming performance when compared with the 5070. 
This really shouldn't be a surprising result given the difference in tiers of these cards. If you now overclock the RTX 5070 using the approach I outline in my How to Overclock an NVIDIA GPU the Right Way guide, this difference reduces to around 52%, which is good, but still a long way behind the stock performance of the 4090. If you now add 2x frame generation to the RTX 5070, we finally start to see the 5070 catch up, offering around 7% better average FPS performance when compared to the 4090 at stock conditions, which is impressive. Of course, you can also enable frame generation for the RTX 4090, so a fair comparison will still position the RTX 4090 well ahead of the 5070 in terms of gaming performance, as you would expect. If we now move to Cyberpunk 2077 and compare stock performance at 4K with RT Ultra Graphics settings, the difference is significant with the RTX 4090 offering approximately 83% better average performance compared with the 5070. Again, not a surprising result considering the difference in tiers of each card being tested. If you overclock the RTX 5070, this difference reduces to around 62%, which is good, but still a long way behind. If we now add frame generation, the RTX 5070 performance almost catches the stock RTX 4090 with a difference of around 13% in average performance. If we now take this a step further and add multi-frame generation to the overclocked RTX 5070 and compare this against a 4090 with frame generation, we can see that the RTX 5070 does indeed surpass the performance of the RTX 4090 by around 6%, which is impressive. That said, the RTX 4090 is in stock condition, so if you overclock it in the same way that the 5070 was overclocked, the performance will increase by around 8%, which in turn would eliminate the small advantage that the overclocked 5070 enjoyed. So does the RTX 5070 really offer 4090 levels of performance? Based on the testing presented in this video, the answer is yes, but only in some games and only when using DLSS4 upscaling with frame generation turned on. In all other situations, the RTX 4090 will offer significantly higher performance. So while the CEO of NVIDIA was not technically lying when he claimed that the RTX 5070 was able to offer 4090 levels of performance, his statement was incredibly misleading. As a result, I think it's important to label this claim as false, even though it can be true under a very specific set of circumstances. If Jensen had simply stated that the RTX 5070 would be able to achieve 4090 levels of performance by leveraging a new frame generation technology, then it would have been accurate and I think would have been better received. It's a shame because multi-frame generation is an amazing technology that has been somewhat overlooked because of the way that it was introduced. If you're playing single player titles such as Cyberpunk 2077 and Black Myth Wukong, I would recommend using MFG. The image quality and performance is exceptionally good. Unfortunately, this innovation was heavily tainted by marketing spin, which has largely biased the broader community against the use of AI-based frame generation technology. The good news is that consumers are now less likely to fall victim to marketing spin like this in the future. At least I hope they won't. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching the next video in the Blackbird PC Tech True or False series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes as I attempt to guide you on your PC Tech journey. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks, please also consider joining our membership program. Bye for now.